Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, outer space. 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 Hope you enjoy. Story number one. In Death's Garden, The Human in the Top Hat. Written by Teller of Tall Tales. Of all the races on Earth, I consider humans the least tasteful. The elves, dwarves, orcs, all had their charming qualities as a species, granting them their own special afterlife with their gods. But humans, for the largest part, did not believe in a specific god or gods. Their religions, why, and very, a point of often conflict. So, when I say the marsh human in the black suit and top it, Calmly leaning against the asphodel pomegranate tree, staring at the black sky and dull sun was a surprise. I did not say it lightly. The human seemed content to rest there, occasionally lowering the hand mouthpiece to sip from a small flask. I thought how to approach. It's not common knowledge that humans make their promise to kill death quite regularly, but none truly mean it, could they? I approached from behind, not making a sound as I encroached upon the relaxing human. When I was only a meter away, the human turned to look behind the tree, pale blue eyes locking into the void beneath my hood. I was wondering when you would show up, he stated in a soft, youthful voice. I stayed silent as the human went back to gazing at the sky. I was hoping I'd get to see my friends again at the end, but I guess I'm alone here. The sadness in the human's voice cut me deep a feeling I'd never felt as I remembered his memories. The staccato fire of an automatic firearm filled my ears, the anguished screams and wet gasps of pain from sucking chest wounds. I found myself resting against the tree on the opposite side of the tree. What brings you here? I inquired softly, lacing my bony fingers together. The human laughed. Softly, <laughs> I volunteered to stay behind while the others got out. Part of it was for them. Part of it was because I must cronk. The human paused, sighing gently and groaning as he stood. Perhaps you could walk with me a while, Mr. Death. I'd like someone to tell my story to. I pondered the request and stood, letting the human lead as he stepped into one of the smooth obsidian paths. He started by taking off his hat as he gazed at the bush of black roses. My parents abandoned me at birth. The first person I have memories of is big sister Tasha and brother Kronk, an elf and an orc for clarification. He donned his hat, continued to walk. We stuck together in the orphanage, had to, to survive. When nobody wished to adopt three children or separate races, we were thrown to the street. In those clear blue eyes, sadness loomed like a black cloud. Tasha was the first to fall. She got addicted to an elven drug I can't remember the name of, and I watched my big sister fade away in front of me. He wiped his eyes and stopped by some violet purple lilacs. Kronk. Kronk was brave, braver than I ever could have dreamed to be. We accidentally wandered into the dwarves' territory. We were just looking for a place to rest when we heard the shout. He seemed to flinch and shudder. Kronk put me behind him when we saw the gun. He saved me at the expense of his life. I held his hand as he took his last breaths, fighting to stay alive just ten minutes longer so an ambulance could arrive. Tears moistened the eye holes of the mask as the human wiped his eyes and snuffled. I was alone after that, and I did a lot of bad things in the name of avenging my friends. I killed people. I stole life-saving medicine to get high. I broke families apart and destroyed neighborhoods in the name of my friends. He stopped as he spotted an open grave deep in the poppy fields. It caught up to me eventually. I was shot in the chest and left for dead by the orcs for robbing one of their banks. He gazed off into the distance silently. Is that how you got here? I asked softly wondering why someone who did all this would regret it if they were no longer accountable. He shook his head. No. Something uh, strange happened while I was bleeding out. Kronk appeared there, standing on the edge of the grave I dug for myself. He asked me, Is this what I saved you for? To end up dead in the middle of a field after ruining so many lives? Maybe my death was in vain, and as I lay there, dying, I wished I could get... One more shot at life. 
Maybe I'll get it right this time. He took a deep breath and a lighter from his pocket as he removed the black top hat. An old friend, clean from her addiction, stuck me out. Tasha nursed me back to health, but told me she couldn't support me down the road I was on. He sparked the light and touched it to the hat, the flames spreading across it and his suit in a wildfire that made me step back. When the flame extinguished, a stark white suit and top hat adorned his body. So, uh, I changed my ways. I began recruiting people for a gang. The Top Hat Clan, I named it, after an ancient computer game faction. As we grew, we did great things. He seemed to relax a little. Members patrolled their neighborhoods and kept them safe at night. We opened up kitchens for the homeless and rehab centers for the addicted. We went to a war with brutal cartels and gangs to hopefully bring peace to our little corner of Earth. He pulled off his hat and then his mask. A young man, no more than twenty-five, smiled into the distance. I was hot that day, I died. I was sweating like a pig in my Kevlar suit as we rolled towards our final battle, Mariana de Valtas Cartel. We invaded the base only to find their leader, a heartbeat sensor hooked to a massive stash of explosives. A tear rolled down his faces. I didn't once regret telling them to shut me in there with him and run. After all, I'm the leader. That's my job. Get everyone out alive. He began to fade away as he's dead. When I knew they were gone, I shot him in the head. Like smoke in the wind, the man disappeared and left me thinking. Maybe I should reserve a place here for those humans who do such good. End of story. Story number two. Something to lose, written by Warp Mind. Mercantile star on the edge of Psy Dracoda's system. Azak coughed and spat a little blood. The beating had been brutal. So, satisfied with the abuse yet? Oh, mighty pirate captain. Grax sneered back. How have you beaten until you tell me what I want to know? So speak! Azak sighed. It would help if you actually told me what you want, you know. I could recite encyclopedias until you get specific. But until you actually ask me a question... <laughs> One of Grox's goons kicked Azak in the side, probably leaving a small fracture in the rib. Quit sassing, ya captain, and answer him. Grax gestured his goon to take a step back. You found a human and tamed it. I want to know how. I'm trying to secure a few of my own readers... But they are uh, difficult to get compliant, despite their documented capacity for violence. Azak shook his head. You want humans as uh, aggressively trained pets. Won't work. They're not animalistic. They're sentience. Grox gestured to his goons again, and they dragged in a huddled figure of a man. Muscular, but timid, seemingly not quite mentally present. This human of yours is a veteran soldier. A marine, I think. And they call him... But I asked around, you found him in a drift in space, after he was apparently lost in a stasis pod for an unknown amount of time, yes. By all accounts, he should be a ravening beast, but you've kept him docile, yet an effective soldier who follows orders. Tell me how. As Ackermanst, well, we picked up Corporal White a while back, and he's been uh, through uh, things I can't even imagine. My grandpa had more dealings with humans, closer to their region of space, and he told me that the best way to keep a human befriended is to give them something they care about. Something to care for. Grox chuckled, signaling his goon to kick Azag again as a small cage was brought into the room. We found the human spunk. You're saying that you gave him the thrill for a pet. Ridiculous. But you're not keeping his loyalty like that. Grox reached into the cage and pulled out a small, fluffy animal, similar to the shape of a hexapedal rabbit and tore its head off with a competuous sneer. There, your hold over him is broken. Now he'll serve me. Keep your head down, and I might not blow your ship up with his weird depart. Azak laughed, a sore, painful laughter. <laughs> but Grandpa told me another thing, too. The only thing more dangerous than a human with something to protect is a human who has just lost the lasting precious to him. And if you're the one that calls that state of affairs, you may the gods have mercy on you, but the human will not. Grox looked at Anzac with a confused expression. 
then turned towards the human as two bodies softly thumped against the floor, and a hoarse voice whispered, Daisy. Grux never made it back to his own ship. Azek, on the other hand, spent a long time consulting his broken human friend afterwards, and brought him along to an animal shelter on the next port of call. As his grandpa had told him, sometimes the only way that you can help a human is to give them something to lose. End of story. I would quickly like to thank our tier 5 patrons and channel members. Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, It's Difficult to Pronounce, Lord Arishakal, Dragzoon, WRE, and Arcadian. Thank you very much.